time for Patel It Like It Is, where Dr. Lok Patel shares health advice on the topics that matter most to you. With summer just a few weeks away, you're probably spending more time outside. But with that comes a risk of skin cancer. Here's Dr. Patel with everything you need to know to protect your skin from the sun. It's sunny. Let's go outside. Wait, put on sunscreen and a hat, glasses, and shirt. Okay, now I'm ready to go. Because check it out, the sun with its ultraviolet solar glory can be damaging to our skin, causing sunburns, premature aging, and skin cancer. And I'm trying to protect this cafe mocha skin of mine, so I've enlisted the help of three all-star dermatologists to give me some advice. First, how about an overview of how common skin cancer is? Skin cancer is the most common cancer in the United States. In fact, one out of every five Americans will develop skin cancer at some point during their lifetimes. Whoa. It's more common than people think. Anyone, at any age, and any skin color can develop skin cancer. And now I'm a little freaked out. Don't be. It's all about awareness and prevention. Okay, got it. So what are some actionable steps for me to take? Ultraviolet light exposure is the most preventable risk factor for all types of skin cancer. So remember to seek shade and wear sun protected clothing, including long sleeve shirts, hats, and sunglasses. Done and done. Wear broad spectrum sunscreen with at least a 30 SPF whenever you go outside, even on a cloudy day. Good old sunscreen and its ability to protect against harmful UV rays. Oh, and two more things. Avoid tanning beds. They're really, really bad for you. And check your skin out every once in a while. Once a month is about the right time frame. If you see anything new or changing, make sure to check in with your dermatologist. Okay, let's be real. I'm not going tanning anytime soon, but I am overdue in seeing a dermatologist because I have this weird spot. Never mind that. Let's talk about some best practices when it comes to choosing and using sunscreen. Of course, always down to talk sunscreen. Make sure it's broad spectrum, water resistant if you can, and at least SPF 30 or you're not trying. I have plenty of that in stock. But do you remember to reapply every two hours? I do, I do, see? Great job, but make sure you use at least an ounce of sunscreen so you have adequate protection from the sun. That's a good reminder. I use sunblock every single day and it's still important for me to hear all this. By following these simple tips, your skin, my skin, all our skin can be better protected and we can reduce our risk of getting skin cancer while still having some fun in the sun. Thank you, dermatologists. <laughs> Dr. Alok Patel joins me now for more on this. Uh, Dr. Patel, we got to ask about where you got that tank top when we're done with this. But uh, let's. Not about. <laughs> and he's I'm got it with him. It. Um, but let's start with the sunscreen, all right? We often hear terms like SPF, broad spectrum, chemical, mineral. What do these all mean? What should we be looking for when we're at the store? And why do these terms matter? I'm glad you asked, Diane. Let's do a quick sunscreen decoder for people when they go out there to pick up their sunscreen. So starting off the top, SPF stands for sun protection factor. That's essentially going to be how much of that solar exposure you're blocking on your skin. SPF 30 blocks about 97%. That's where you want to start. Broad spectrum is an actual FDA regulated term, which means it's going to block UVA and UVB rays. Think of A as in aging, B as in burning. Both can cause skin cancer. Mineral sunscreen works like a shield. Those are ingredients like zinc oxide. You might get that whitish tint. Tint. Chemical sunscreen works like a sponge absorbing UV rays. And a couple quick important reminders, you wanna put on sunscreen 20 minutes before, reapply every two hours, even on cloudy days. And I can show you a visual. People need to make sure they're using about an ounce of sunscreen, which is about an, the amount that you would see in a shot glass, which I'll be honest, a lot of people do not use the recommended amount for all your exposed skin. Make sure you check that expiration date. And this is the most responsible use of a shot glass I've ever seen. <laughs> what about the ingredients in sunscreen? Can they be harmful to you, to the environment? What do we need to consider there? Well, according to the FDA, the two ingredients that are deemed perfectly safe are going to be zinc oxide and titanium oxide, commonly found in mineral sunscreens. The FDA is looking into 12 other ingredients, and people may have seen headlines about the concern that some of these ingredients might get into your bloodstream. But the important thing is that none of these have been deemed unsafe for human consumption. The overwhelming important opinion is that this is from the American Academy of Dermatology, American Academy of Pediatrics, the CDC, is that you should still be putting on sunscreen every single day. The FDA just wants to get more research. Now, people out there might still say, hey, I'm worried about the environment. I wanna make sure I'm being eco-conscious when putting on my sunscreen. So here are some quick tips for that. 
one thing you want to look at is try to find sunscreen that might come in a recycled container. Maybe it's in a cardboard container. People also recommend avoiding that spray sunscreen. I know it's convenient, but the fumes are dangerous and it might get into water supply. Also, the more clothing you're wearing, the less sunscreen you need to use. So you could use like UPF clothing, ultra protective factor. And also, Diane, read ingredients because guess what? Reef safe is not a regulated term. Flip that container around and look to see what you're putting on your skin. Now, in your video, you mentioned skin cancer screening and looking for strange spots. So how do you know which spots are normal and which ones need to be checked? Well, about once a month, people recommend looking at your body head to toe, even behind your scalp, between your fingers and toes, your palms everywhere. And what dermatologists like to use as kind of a rough guidance for what concerning spots might be are the A, B, C, D, and E of looking for melanoma. A being asymmetry. If you see a spot that's on a clean circle, if the border's irregular, if the color's changing, if the diameter is getting bigger, maybe more than six millimeters, and if it's evolving, meaning the spot is changing over time, that's a time to chat with your doctor, hopefully a board-certified dermatologist. All right, Dr. Patel, always great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Patel is taking your question, so leave a message on our Instagram feed, and he just might answer your question right here on Friday. That's at ABC News Live. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.